Hey guys, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Quarantine Photography. Today we're going to be trying out some really awesome high-speed photography ideas. If you're new to the channel, please consider smashing that subscribe button. We are so close to 2,000 subscribers. And if you don't know what the Quarantine Photography series is about, basically I'm gonna be taking three creative photos every day that I'm in quarantine and sharing the results with you guys on YouTube. If you guys wanna participate in the challenge, simply tag me on Instagram when you post any photos using these ideas. I think I've spoken just about enough, so let's get creative. Okay, so for the first shot, I'm going to be using a big wine glass some food coloring and some black card to try and get some really cool high speed shots of the food coloring and the water mixing together. Um, I've seen a whole lot of these on Instagram and they look really, really awesome, so I decided to try it out for myself. So firstly, we're gonna try and make our black backdrop just so our background here doesn't uh, take away from the color in the water. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna fill up the glass with water and then I'm going to be trying out some red and some blue um, food coloring, uh, trying to mix them together, do them on their own, see what I can create with this and maybe even try mixing them with a spoon, get some interesting looking patterns and stuff in the water and then we'll move on to our next one. Okay, so there's one issue with using the uh, blue food coloring with a black background, and I don't know how I didn't think of this before, but you can't actually see too much of the food coloring in the glass because of the black background. So I'm gonna try the blue food coloring one more time without the black background to see if the results are slightly better. Okay, so just before I started taking that last set of photos, I actually found this whiteboard, which I think was gonna work better. I'm not too sure about the blue. I'm gonna try the red food coloring now and see if we can get some better results. Okay, so I'm gonna try the shot one more time, but this time I'm gonna stir the water so that when I drop the food coloring in, it sort of goes in a spiral. I have no idea how these are gonna turn out, but it's hope for the best. Okay, so we've just finished with the ink shots. We're gonna head over to the other side of the garden to start doing the next shot. Okay, so unfortunately my camera actually ran out of space and I was not able to record me explaining the different photos that I was taking. So I'm gonna explain them to you now and then I'll cut to the footage of me taking the photos. So basically for the second shot, what you need is a glass bowl and a lemon or an apple or some form of fruit that you can drop. And basically you're gonna fill that bowl up with water, take it to your desired location. I decided to put some black card underneath it so that I didn't have the cement floor in the background. Basically what you need to do is set your camera on a really fast shutter speed and drop the lemon into the water and try and capture the moment when it hits the water and makes that big splash while keeping the lemon in focus. And now it's time to move on to the third and final shot. For this shot, you're going to need a wine glass, preferably one smaller than the one we used earlier in the video. So basically you're gonna fill this glass to the top with water. And again, you're gonna set your camera to a very fast shutter speed. Basically what you're gonna try and do is spill the water out of the glass in a circular motion to try and capture some really cool patterns in the water. Okay, so I've just spent the last 30 minutes trying to get all of that food coloring from the first shot out of my fingernails. And I've also managed to finish editing all of the photos from today's shoot. So starting off with the first photo, which was the food coloring and the huge wine glass. This did not go as well as I thought it would. The black background didn't work too well with the blue. As you can see in this photo on my left, you could not see the food coloring at all. And it just didn't turn out very nicely. So I then went and put a white background behind it and tried it out with the red food coloring. It turned out a little bit better, but I still didn't really like the photos. I also tried mixing the two colors, didn't work too well either. My last attempt was to try and stir the water and then drop the, the food coloring in to try and get it to sort of spin around inside of the glass. This was probably the better of the three photos, but I'm still not too happy with the results. Out of all the photos of the wine glass, this was definitely my favorite because I like how the red sort of 
wrapped around the stem of the glass and overall it was kind of just the best photo out of them all. Next time I would definitely shoot this inside because in every single one of the photos you could see the reflection of my roof and the sky and it really didn't look too nice and it sort of took away from the food coloring in the glass. I think maybe next time I'll also shoot slightly more cropped in because I want to get that detail but overall I'd probably give the best photo maybe a 5 out of 10. Moving on to the second set of photos which was the lemon in the bowl. I managed to actually get a few good photos of the lemon entering the water with that splash and having the lemon in focus. Unfortunately it was a little bit dark with these last two sets of photos so I had to drop my shutter speed in order to avoid getting noise from upping my ISO. So some of these shots may have a few bits where the water is not actually tack sharp but for the most part it's pretty good. So my best shot was definitely this one up on my left. I love how the lemon is center frame and the water sort of comes up right to the top of the lens, kind of almost in a circle as well. This actually was the first of the shots. The blackboard underneath was not wet, so it actually turned out really nicely. The lemon was nice and yellow. And overall, I'd probably give this photo an eight out of 10. I think this was one of the more successful photos of the day. I also tried a few side on shots, which turned out pretty cool. Uh, I particularly like this one up on my left just because of how the water sort of bubbles off of the lemon and the splash also looks pretty cool. Moving on to the third and final set of photos which was the wine glass in the hand where I tried to spill it out and get some pretty cool patterns. Now I must say this was really really interesting. I got a few pretty cool looking ones where the spray was pretty cool and the water was tack sharp. Uh, the sun had also just set so the sky was pretty nice but I actually have two favorites for this shot and I'll show you why right now. This one is my favorite because of how interesting the water was. So for this shot if you zoom into the water you can actually see some sort of face. I know it's really weird. For me, I can see sort of a little face there with black hair on it. Yeah, and the water just looks pretty cool for that photo. I also like how it came out of the glass. And overall, I'd probably give that photo maybe a seven and a half, eight out of 10. But my favorite photo from the set was definitely this one. I absolutely love how the water came out of the glass. I love how it twisted around completely and was completely flat and smooth. The water is completely sharp. It looks really, really good. And my absolute best part of this entire photo is if I zoom in to where the water sort of twists, the sun sits right next to that and sort of peeks through that part of the water, which is exactly what I wanted to do with this photo. Ultimately, this photo, I'd probably give a 9 out of 10. It was definitely the, my favorite photo and definitely the best photo from the day. I really, really liked how it turned out and I'm really happy with this shot. So let me know in the comments which one of these photos was your favorite. And if you want to try out any of these shots and maybe get involved in the challenge, then tag me on Instagram so I can see the photos that you guys create every day. If you're new to the channel and want to see more quarantine photography ideas, then please smash that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you never miss another upload. If you enjoyed this episode of quarantine photography ideas, then please consider slapping that like button. It really, really helps me and I'd really appreciate it. That is the end of the second episode of quarantine photography. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one.